Welcome back to Fantasy Football Today, presented by Snickers. Snickers satisfies. I haven't seen an official report yet, but there is a tweet from Le'Veon Bell. Let me make sure I have it here. Uh, from what Le'Veon sent out, uh, basically saying that he's he's been released from the Ravens. He's thanking the Baltimore City of Baltimore, Eric DeCosta, the general manager, and John Harbaugh, the coach there. So it sounds like maybe Latavius Murray's coming back. Uh, quickly, how do we see the backfield there for Baltimore? Well, is Le'Veon back? So, or I mean, Latavius Let's back. Let's assume he's back. If he's back, Latavius, I figure, would be the lead running back, and Devontae Freeman will handle passing downs and kind of work in tandem on rushing downs. Yeah, I would say Devontae Freeman in the J.K. Dobbins role and Latavius Murray in the Gus Edwards role. And then if Le- if Latavius... The exact opposite of what Dave said. Right. So, okay. So, I, you know. <laughs> there you go. Know. We're confused as all of you are. And, and, and I bet the Ravens are still a little bit confused. And in the event that Latavius isn't ready, then Devontae Freeman might be handed the lion's share, and they might give another chance to Tyson Williams. Maybe. Maybe so. Maybe so. So you want to take a speculative ad on Tyson just to see what happens. But uh, Titans, take note. Sometimes the older running back doesn't work. Give the younger guy an opportunity. Maybe do the same thing with Adrian Peterson and Deontay Foreman. All right, let's talk about wide receiver and tight end waivers to add and some trade talk as well. Let's show you the wide receivers who are on a buy for this week and some big-name guys, clearly no Cooper Cup, uh, Van Jefferson, Odell Beckham for the Rams, and then Judy, Cortland Sutton, Tim Patrick for the Broncos. The wide receivers to add this week, and again, this is a group that could be different for a lot of different people. For me, Darnell Mooney is the best. You got Rashad Bateman. Uh, I changed some of this in terms of what you'll see in the column, but uh, you, you get the picture. It's Jacoby Myers, the Giants guys. It's a it's a very messy group of players for me outside of Mooney and Bateman. Uh, you also could throw, if you want to, Corey Davis into the conversation. He's at 66% roster percentage, but we usually cut it off at 65%. So um, I guess uh, just quickly, who's your favorite guy to add, Dave? My so favorite guy to add is Galladay. Okay, for you, Heath, who is it? In full PPR, it's probably Jacoby Myers. All right, so there you go. We're all over the place in terms of the best wide receiver uh-huh. ad. So let's talk about Darnell Mooney first because he's coming off a strong stretch of games, and Justin Fields has been leaning on him. 12 or more PPR points, three of his last four. He gets a Baltimore defense that has been miserable lately. I think he's going to continue to get better. Dave said it. The offensive line getting healthier for the Bears. This is the guy that Justin Fields likes. Now, maybe it's Allen Robinson. If you want to take a speculative Allen Robinson, he's at 71%. But the outlook for Mooney moving forward, Heath, is what? A boom-bust, hopefully number three wide receiver. He, right now, I'd say he's more of a boom-bust flex, who I, I get a little bit concerned. It seemed like at the beginning of the Bears' last game, they were really making an effort to get the ball to Allen Robinson. I think they ended up with the same number of targets, but Robinson did make the big play late. Um, I, I think he's a boom-bust flex right now. Yeah, I, I think that's exactly where almost everybody that we're going to talk about is going to land. Who's the one that has the best chance to be a number two receiver? I don't know if any of them really do. I, I agree. I Maybe think, yep. Mooney does. I don't even feel good saying that Kenny Galladay does, and Galladay is the one I would target first. Yes, and you have him 40th this week, and that's with maybe no Sterling Shepard, so I don't think you have a lot of hope for him. Uh, in terms of Bateman, he's got six or more targets in four straight games, eight or more targets each of the, la- eight targets each of the last two games, uh, and I think the one that was most telling was the Dolphins game because that was with Sammy Watkins back on the field. So can he get better? Is he going to get worse? How do we view Bateman moving forward, Dave? I think he has a chance to stay right around where he was in Week 10, and really it took the final drive of the game for Baltimore to get Rashad Bateman going. He finished with 14 PPR points, and maybe that opened the eyes for John Harbaugh a little bit and said, hey, this is a guy who can do something to help the offense. We shouldn't wait till the last drive of the game to get him involved. And and it would obviously, it would hurt Marquise Brown. It would hurt Mark Andrews, but I, I, I think Bateman's worth giving him a little bit more of an opportunity. Eight targets is a lot in a game where they had to throw a ton. He could potentially be right around six or seven per game in games where they don't have to throw as much. All right, give me 20 seconds on Jacoby Myers, why you like him the best. He's scored a touchdown. He's broken the seal. It'd be no problem getting into the end zone now. I just think it's a good matchup this week. He scores around 10 fantasy points most times. I had a couple weeks where he was in the 7 to 8 range, but I think in full PPR, he has the highest floor of these guys, but maybe the lowest ceiling. And again, Mooney, Bateman, Myers, Galladay, this week, I have all within two points. Like It's not like there's a big group. There's just a bunch of these guys. So the, the reason I, I changed around a little bit, when I looked at Myers, four targets into the last two weeks, he's right. just not getting the volume that he was early in the season. That's why I got a little bit concerned. Uh, Dave, just give me 20 seconds on Galladay. Why you like him today? Ten or more PPR points in three of the four games he's played, at least 35 snaps in, six and a half targets in those four games. The Giants offensive line seemingly getting better. Andrew Thomas looks like he's on his way back. Saquon's on his way back. Maybe the best version of the Giants' offense is going to show itself, and Galladay should be the top target in them. And I've got one more guy just in super deep leagues, Marcus Johnson. The last three games, Julio Jones has not missed. 23% target share, 15% target share, 
22% target share. He's doing what Julio Jones was supposed to do better than what Julio Jones was. So he yep. might actually matter. Six targets, five catches, 100 yards. The reason you don't see him on this list, we only put 10 on the graphic. <laughs> so he's uh, you'll see him in the column if you want to read more about him on CBSSports.com. 